Steve is on the phone. Uh, any amendments to the agenda? Nope. Okay. So uh, our first item of business is to consider whether to waive the three to 8% penalty for late homestead filings action likely. And my memory is in light of the pandemic that we waived this last year. And I think we waived it the previous year, didn't we Dorinda? Um, I think last year was the first year we were enacting it. Actually, we hadn't been doing it ever. And then we made, oh. the, we made the decision to do it. And then at the last minute, we decided not to do it. Um, yeah. because of the pandemic. Yeah. Well, I think that uh, considering we're still in the pandemic and there's probably a little bit of time left to go here, I certainly would be in favor of waiving it again this year to get this behind us. I mean, um, did we notice any, any different difference in response because there was no penalty? Well, this isn't a penalty for paying taxes late. This is a penalty for people not filing their their HS-122 on time. Oh, and, no, I understand. And I think there's no reason, pandemic or no pandemic, I really don't see a reason why people can't file their taxes on time. You know, that's my take on it. It's, um, you know, one way or the other, they, they should be, they're home. Yeah. <laughs> they have more time, if anything, to file them. And the tax um, filing deadline was extended anyway. So I'm assuming this was extended along with that. Yes. Yep. Hey, so they the, other, <laughs> the other issue in this is what happens, and correct me if I'm I'm wrong about this, Dorinda, but what happens is if they don't file, they get uh they get the lower tax rate, correct? That's correct. And then if they, if we chase them and then they file, then there's a fair amount of accounting and falderal to put it back the way it's supposed to be. So there is, I don't know how many, how many uh, late filers did we have, Dorinda, do you know? And I don't know the number, but I do know there is people who do not file their HS 122s. Yeah, and they do it to save because they know they're going to pay less taxes. Right. right. Yeah. And we don't have any ability to chase them, right? This is all within the state's hands. Well, it's it's up to the. My understanding, it's up to the state. They're the only ones that can enforce it. Right. But what would happen is if it comes out that they filed it late for whatever reason, I believe we can notify the state and then what action the state takes from there. But what would happen is when we get the late notice from, because we continue to get these updates, you know, for the next several months, which means we have to send out new tax bills. Right. So um, that's when we, assess the penalty or could assess the penalty. Okay. Well, we would have no way. I mean, this, this is, I think, what, what put me off last year. If someone just doesn't file, not late file, but just doesn't file, they're going to get the benefit of the lower taxes and there's basically nothing we can do. We can't find them. We can't do anything, right? No, nope, right. we can turn them in. That's all we can do. Right. So the only yeah. time, the only people we find are the people who do it, but they do it late. The people well, who are who are deliberately avoiding it and refusing to do it, unless the state changes their posture, there's nothing we can do. So that that to me is the reason to waive it, because I think we're penalizing potentially. Yeah people but um, i mean the whole thing seems backwards if you don't you know if you don't file you get the lower rate it would seem to me that if you don't file you should automatically pay the higher rate but, right, but because of the way because of the way the taxes are calculated and i have worked hard to try and figure out i know how this came out to be upside down and i can't figure out it was never the intent that it'd be upside down but it's Upside down in Middlesex and in quite a number of other towns, and I really don't understand why. Yep. 
But the, the thing of it is, is if we don't implement this and say we turn the list of people that we know are residents of the town over to the state and the state comes back and says, yep, you know, they, they are, they indeed are a uh, resident of Middlesex, they would not be penalized in any way either. So. Right. But what's the. What's the probability that the state's really going to do that? Well, it's happened. I, I mean, I, I would assume the listers could give you, I don't follow the state payments, right. where the listers are the ones that get that information, but right. they're the ones that had said right along that, you know, we're missing the boat by not implementing right. this. I'm, I'm, I'm right the, in the middle of the road on this. Is the penalty designed to cover the administrative burden of going after, you know, and yes. mailings and all that kind of stuff? That's what it's designed for? Yeah. Because yeah. there is yeah. a working. Right? <laughs> and we can assess anywhere from three to 8%. And if I recall last year, you did 5% and then canceled it. Yeah. Well, does it make sense to do a, to do a little bite and see how it goes, like do do the three. I don't know. <clears throat> that's somebody who pays significant taxes. That's real money. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's not peanuts we're talking about. Right. I'll say that as a taxpayer, um, knowing that there are folks out there that purposely avoid filing because they get a lower tax rate, uh, it's awful irritating, and I personally feel like you know the town struggles to to fund everything that we need to do anyway um so i'm i'm all for you know that that penalty and i actually think we should chase if the listers have a list of people that they know are residents i think that they should send it in yeah yeah well, what say you steve well, I think I think we should do either three or five percent. I'll make it a motion. I'll, I'll make a motion that we do five percent then. Second. Okay. So moved by Steve, seconded by Phil. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay. There we go. There we go. Um, okay, treasurer's report, reviewing and approving the submissions for the highway emergency grant related to the May 19th, 2019 storm action likely, and also other important treasurer updates. So I sent you guys um, the summary for the um, what I feel we should submit, which was a lot of work put in by Steve and myself as far as trying to go back and recreate all this information. Um, so we did make it over the $80,000 mark, which we have to do 10%. So we're only gonna get 72 out of it if they approve everything. Yeah, but that's the maximum we could get, right? Yeah, right. I assume unless they come back and say, oh, okay, we'll give you, you know, if the grant was allowed for 72%, uh, 72,000, right. but it, I don't know if yeah, they're looking at total expenses or not. Yeah. I don't, I don't think they do, Dorinda. I think because in the contract for that grant, it specifically states that uh, it's 72,000. So wow. I might be wrong, but I, I think that's all we're going to get no matter what oh. our price. Maybe we'll get okay. $50,000 extra COVID money. Who knows? Mm. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, well, either way, I think it's... I, I appreciate all the work you put in. Yeah, that, that was a great job. a bad thing to, to not uh, do that. And in the new world, Dorinda, we're going to have our grant administrator keeping this stuff up, right? Well, that's a topic for discussion. Okay. <laughs> well, this might be a good time. Nope. Not a good time. <laughs> um, so that's basically um, 
that's that. Um, no other real treasure or updates right now. Okay. And we don't need to take any action on that. No, right. I just wanted you guys to see it and see. Okay. I mean, I didn't send you all the backup. The big part is we now I've got all the bills pulled and all, but I have to scan everything and then okay. send it all in. Okay. Um, and any, any update on how it's looking for the end of the year? Um, as far as where we're going to stand. Yeah. Yep. Well, we're going to be, um, I don't have, Mark wasn't here this week. Amy did the payroll stuff, but it's the end of the month. So we'll have a report for the next meeting where we okay. are, okay. but I think, I think we're going to be okay. Yeah. Okay. Good. Well. I know there are a lot of moving parts and they all seem to bubble to the surface in, uh, in the month of June. They do. We have a um, couple of, we have our big school payment that still has to be done, which will be in the next um, uh, payroll, next pay run or, but yeah. that'll be a nice large number. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. But um, yeah, I'll have that report to you for the next meeting. Okay. Well, thanks again for all your work on the on the grant, both of you. Um, that's important, really important. Okay, then. Highway report, Victor. I think you're muted, Vic. Still muted. Still muted, Victor. Yes, how's that? Better? Much better. Yeah. Very good. Very good. Thanks for reminding me. Hey, Peter, we got a meeting tomorrow morning at six o'clock. Correct. Okay. I've already set my alarm for five. Okay. Set the coffee you, pot for 5 15. You're going to wear your steel mesh underwear? <laughs> hey, I don't need my steel mesh underwear. I've got my. I've got my command, my command tone of voice, if heaven forbid I need it. Hopefully, I won't need it. Okay, so the uh, the signs are up in Putnamville. I don't know if anybody noticed them. I was up there today. Yes. Were they both saying thirty-five today? Because last week they were saying thirty one way and thirty-five the other, but they were supposed to correct it, but they had to get a computer program to do it. Hey, Dick. No, I wasn't paying attention. I was so glad the damn things were there. <laughs> I really yeah. wasn't paying attention. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah, I just want to say that I got a really nice note from Albie Bourne, gushing appreciation, thanking for uh, the town, all the town's efforts getting those signs up. He said he could notice the change immediately in the traffic. Well, that's, good. Nice. that's good. That's good. That's nice. good. So that's that's that up there. Um, tomorrow, well, today we were on McCullough Hill. They moved the uh, excavator and uh, actually they got a lot done today. Uh, a lot of ditching all the way over to uh, right across from Pat Freeman's uh, field, if that means anything to you. Yeah. Yeah. From, uh, from uh, Randy Richardson's. Um, tomorrow, uh, we put a note in Front Porch Farm saying that the road would be closed from roughly six to four depending on who goes over there. I didn't know if maybe some of the guys are going to take some culverts over earlier, but maybe not. But anyway, it's going to be closed tomorrow and they're going to be putting culverts, uh, replacing the culverts on, on uh, in, in that same area, that uh, old class four section. Where's that, Vic? What road? McCullough Hill Road, the okay. old class four. Okay, yep. The old class four section from uh, Lee Rosenberg's to... Uh, to Pat Freeman's that area. Um, yeah. um, they just they finished up uh, the Route 12 in Shady Rill. Uh, they went up Shady Rill and um, then they they stopped and went up uh, uh, ditching and cleaning up the berm and stuff on uh, on uh, Woods Road up to I believe it's Evans, the second place up on the left. Yep. Yeah. 
And uh, they're hoping to only be on the Cullah Hill Road, get it all finished out in about, uh, well, three weeks. And uh, then they're headed to uh, Baldock Road and Tangletown. Uh, they want to get everything done uh, with that ditching stuff uh, by September 1st, because uh, if, if everything happens the way it's supposed to, we should get that uh, paving grant. We've got, wow. we've got notification that it's a real possibility. You know, it's a, it's a definite maybe, I guess. <laughs> right. right. But it does sound good. Uh, That's better than we've had for a long time. And so, so we would move, so they would move over there and uh, get that prepped out for, uh, it won't be paved until next spring because, uh, the low bid was Hutchins, and Hutchins said they had a big state job and they wouldn't be able to do it until next uh, spring, but the price it will stay the same. Uh, hey, so, hey, Vic, where is that paving going to take place? It's going to take on Center Road from Steve Martin's uh, all the way down to the interstate, roughly. Okay. Oh, all those potholes. Right. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Great. Yeah. yeah. And... Uh, I think so we're gonna, does that mean does that mean East Hill is off the got pushed off the list this year? No, no, just no. Oh. Wait a minute, give me time. Give me time. All right, keep going. Right. I'm a little sensitive. You're you're paving you're paving Martin's road right in front of his house. Perfect. Is that yeah. Yeah, come over? Come over to your house next. Yeah. <laughs> they want well, to corner, come up to my house. That'd be fine too. Yeah. Okay. And then. Uh, Jeff Newton and Dubois there are supposed to start ditching uh, uh, in, a, in a week or two uh, before the 1st of July over on um, East Hill uh, from about where Bill Pre lives, uh, where that uh, uh, the turn goes up there to, uh, what's that kid's name there? His father used to be the Judge Demick. Was it Demick? Anyways. I don't know. Uh, anyways, from there down to uh, Ray Hickory's, I was down through there today, and uh, it sure does need it. Uh, lined up to where to dump that stuff, and uh, so they should be uh, they should be in there uh, within maybe as early as a week, but for sure by two weeks. Uh, we're just waiting for Jeff Newton to get back to us to schedule that. Okay. He does know that we're remembering that I'd love some ditch dirt, right? Oh yeah. Good. Good you're, you're on the list. Yeah. Do we have a price, Vic? A price for the ditch work for Peter? No. <laughs> no, 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 no. For Newton. Uh, for Newton. Well, you know, he said he started out. I he started out a little bit lower, but then he came back. It's 85 bucks an hour plus 125 says two trucks would be 170 and then uh, 125 dollars would be 295. Okay, well, I'll just let you guys sign off on the bills. I just didn't know if we should be monitoring pricing or what. Oh, yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. I think they're going to work nine and a half hours a day, five days a week. Um, okay. I can send you, I can shoot you that email and um, if we have to use that stone or that the hammer, uh, of course, this year probably that comes with the operator. It's two hundred and sixty-five bucks an hour. Uh, yeah, that hammer to take the ditch material out. And um, better that than blasting. Yep. And um, so uh, then he said, which was new. Uh, he said if they did twenty-five thousand dollars worth of work that they would not charge us uh, moving, uh, demobilizing and mobilizing, mobilizing and demobilizing, which means moving in, moving out, which would save us. I, I got it in the thing. I think it's 750 to move that. Yeah. Yep. So, yep. So anyway, so we do 25,000 bucks. We don't have to pay that. That may be too much information. I don't know, but. Oh, no, it's good information. Yeah, sounds good. And um, then uh, we had trouble with the height, the the ever uh, 
ongoing issues with the uh, hydro cedar and Austin weed is uh, fixing the pump. And we're getting that all ready to go again because we're a little bit behind on, uh, on uh, uh, doing the seeding. And then uh, we also have to, at some point after July 1st is uh, get together with Fred McCullough uh, Steve, uh, Steve wanted to uh, point out uh, what his, what the thoughts were from last year and to get some gravel crushed. I think we're talking 2,500 yards in or in that Venice vicinity. And then we wanted to, uh, we're going to do some sand over there. So. Yep. Sand over where? Out of the town. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry about that, Sarah. Where, where are you going to put the sand? The, the sand no. is out of the town pit. We're going to put it in our stockpile over at the garage. You're going to take sand out of the pit and put it in the garage. No. <laughs> Not exactly. Tell me what you're going to do. The like, They're going to have McCullough process sand. Thank right. you. <laughs> you're going to screen the sand with McCullough, take the screen sand over to the stockpile at the town garage. Okay. For winter use. Yep. I think. Well, that uh, no, the graders come in uh, second week in July, maybe. Mm -hmm. That's the date. And and uh, uh, Susan Clark called me up the other night, and she wants to have a uh, bandstand with the night that they have the bandstand over there uh wednesday night i believe it is she wants to grade her out so the town people can look at it and give it a birthday party <laughs> or it's not mine i think that's a good idea yeah, yeah. See what you're spending your money for yeah exactly so that that's about it anybody got any questions no no yeah randy's got a question good. That paving grant, that, are they going to touch up the end of McCullough Hill down by the bridge to, to center as well? I anticipate that being done, yeah. I think we cover we cover everything that's that blacktop now. Or as we say in the trade, make it black and don't look back. <laughs> <laughs> and the, the other question that I have for you, Vic, is... Uh, while you guys are working up on McCullough, do you have a home for that ditching material or any material that's coming out of there currently? Yeah, we have one that's really, really close right in the middle there, Randy Richardson. And then um, down, um, down in the turnaround area there, right by uh, uh, Matt's got the, uh, is getting some, he's got, uh, I went by there tonight. They got the screen set up there to uh, process that stuff. Why well, you need some? I'd take a few if you if you don't have homes for it all. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure. You know, whatever. You know, get it. Get it. Everybody gets. Uh, Got to be fair about it. Yeah. And, uh, offer it to everybody. Yep. And uh, but but uh, but Randy. Uh, uh, when we start doing the berm removal at the 1st of September down on uh, Center Road for that paving job, you could get some of that. You'd be real close then. Just put me in line for that, whatever is the most efficient. And that's more better stuff because it's all, all gravelly, sandy stuff. Yeah, that's that's fine, Victor. I'll wait till then. Okay. But I'll... Uh, I'll let I'll, I'll discuss it or I'll let Shane know tomorrow we're going to start putting culverts in and... Uh, and uh, see what what he's what he thinks, and because uh, we got some, but uh, uh, the stuff that Newton takes, you'd be a little bit far away. That's gonna go to Peter and uh, and uh, what's the guy's name? Joe McCarthy, Joe McCarthy, and and Johnny Picard. They're kind of right on both ends of it. Yeah, I would only I only if it's efficient, Peter or uh, Victor. Sorry. Uh, how much are you looking for? Uh, I can lose quite a bit out there by the end of the driveway where we uh, dumped it last year. Okay. So you yeah. got 
you got something that would would tell uh, the truck driver where to go? Yeah, let me know ahead if you decide that you're going to start shooting some there, and I'll mark it off. And what I did last year is I actually rented an excavator to to bail off the material and stay ahead of them too. So, depending okay. on what you think you need to get rid of, you know, we'll we'll figure that out. Just give me a call; we can talk about it. Okay. Very good, Randy. Anybody? Else? Yes, Sarah. So I want to ride my scooter to work over the next couple of weeks. Are you guys going to be doing any grading on, on Molly Supel or uh, Brook Road or anything else like that I need to be aware of? I don't think that we'll be grading unless it gets really bad. Okay. Really bad? What, what is really bad? Just, just from dust and dirt and not rain, right? Right. Okay. All right. Thanks. But just let me know. You get bad, I'll get in the grader and run down through there for you. Just to pay for you. So. Oh, she doesn't like the grader. She doesn't like all the loose dirt and stuff. No. Exactly. That's what I don't want. <laughs> okay. Not well, they're going to put, gonna start gonna putting chlorine. Mud when it rains and right after you grade. The, the issue is the pump that Austin is fixing. As soon as we get that fixed, we'll, we'll put some uh, chloride and water down, and it should be uh, less dusty. Okay, I just don't want to get come be halfway from home and have big piles of dirt that I have to get around. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, we'll do our best, sir. <laughs> Anything else for Victor, anybody? Good report, Vic. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Thanks you. Um Walt, just while we have while we have Victor queued up, I wanted him to have a quick uh, a quick discussion just to make sure I have the right understanding about the implementation of our revised personnel policy. I am meeting with the road crew uh, tomorrow morning at six o'clock as Victor mentioned and I'm hoping to get out of there with my life. So I wanna be sure I tell them the right stuff. My memory is when we discussed the new limit on carryover vacation time that we were going to implement that effective a year from this July. In other words, anybody who had extra time would have this year to use up that extra time before it disappeared. But I wanna make sure everybody, uh, everybody agrees with that. I just don't think it's fair to tell them May 18th, we yeah, changed it and you have to use up your time by July 1st of this year. That just doesn't right. pass the SNP test for me. No. And to clarify, it is not new limits. These are the same limits we've carried oh, forward. Oh, oh, we just it. put a date that we're going to implement enforcing the limits. Okay. Right. right. Correct. And now the other question you're going to get, if you want, if you want to know what it, I mean, can we talk about that? We have to go to executive. Sure. No, they were concerned about when they get their time, their annual leave. Don't they get so much every two weeks? They They're earn it every week in their paycheck. If they follow their paycheck, they'll see it accrues each week. Each week? That does not change each pay period. Pay period. Yeah. So, so that so. has not changed either. So none of this is new information. It's just nothing was being followed. Right. OK. So. So if that person had uh, what's what's the maximum they carry over the top of your head? 120 hours. 20 yeah. hours. 15. Yeah. 100. Yeah. 120 hours. Okay. So so when if a guy's got 120 hours a year from July 1st, then if he goes in and he gets what I don't know it must be six hours or something a pay period. Whatever it falls out to be, I don't have the numbers in front of me. So he would have to take that off. No, it's carry forward. So if they had 135 hours sitting on the books on June 30th, they would only be able to carry over 120. Okay. Right. Nobody's saying they have to use it. They just can't carry over more than that from year to year. Okay. Which is what, as Dorinda pointed out, that's what our policy has said all along. Right, right. It's just we haven't enforced it. So this is 
this is the warning that you've got a year to get your you know what together or you're gonna lose you your time yeah make sure you take it okay so we are we are in agreement that it's a year from this july when the 120 goes into effect right yes so, and like i said i surprised that anybody is in that situation but i could go back and look other than sarah but i can i mean because normally the highway department has been keeping right up with their hours right well we'll we'll see what it is i just want to be sure want to be sure i give them the straight uh the straight pitch and i'm willing to say we should not amend our personnel policy to say that that it will be in the minutes that that particular provision is going to be implemented effective July 1, 2022. You got that, Sarah? Yep. You need to get it for more than more than one reason, as you well know. <laughs> yeah. We're just going to have to put her on forced leave. <laughs> yeah. So she can go okay. scooter ride. Thank you. Thank you. I just, I just, I truly, I mean, I, I understand that they're a little, they're a little stirred up about this because they think we're taking something away from them, but obviously we are not. So. Well, I don't think they understand that they're getting it every week in their paycheck. They, they think they're going to get like six days on their anniversary or something. No, that's no. that. That's not true. They, this was I all know. explained to them a year ago, Victor. Yeah. Or I two know. years ago. I know. Well, we'll see how I do. If I if I shoot up a flare, come with your shotguns loaded with salt and get me out of there. Okay. Well, I'll be there anyways. <laughs> okay. Well, as long as you're there to back me up, Victor, I'm comfortable. Okay. Hey, they've never. Uh, they may they may talk about me behind my back, but when I'm there, they're pretty nice to me. So that's good. Yeah, that's that's good. I'll well, be there. They if they have a copy of the old personnel policy, they'll see where it, it was accrued every single week, yeah. every single pay period. Well, okay. and they should see it on their check stub. So. And they should see it on their check stubs, right. 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 It shows what they earn and what they use on every check stub. Right. Can't get better than that. No. no. OK, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Victor. So we need to approve our minutes from our May 18th select board meeting. Is there a motion? So I'll make that motion. I'll second. Okay. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Thank you. We've approved our minutes. <laughs> Correspondence from the school. I can't. I can't even say what all those initials mean. Re the electric charging station at Rumney and vandalism of Rumney property on town owned land action unlikely. So the way I, I, I found that letter a little confusing that we got. I mean, I understand the vandalism, that's too bad. That's a shame. It is, it is what it is. Um, but basically what it is, what it sounds like to me is they're gonna keep the charging station there, but they're not gonna pay for the electricity. Is that the, is that's that why I read it. Read it? Yeah. And I think that's fine. Mm -hmm. And they're not asking us to pay for it, so that's even more fine. Okay. So I just hope people I just hope people use it because there's a cost to have it there. But anyway, they didn't use it when the electricity was free. So I don't know whether they're gonna use it now. Right. Yeah. Who knows? What why is there a cost to it, Peter? Well, it's the cost. There are two costs. There's there's the cost of having the machinery there, and you know some of it's a software maintenance fee. I don't know what it all is, Victor. I mean, he outlined it in the in the original letter. Yeah. You know, it, it it isn't it isn't an inexpensive thing, but what bothered me was the fact that they made the electricity free too, which doesn't make any sense. Nobody puts any free gasoline in my pickup truck. Why should there be electricity? But the convenience of having it there, I I get, but Peter, though I didn't get it. I read the letter over and over, and I just thought it was, I just didn't I didn't get it. But yeah. the the 
like I have a charging, a level two charging station in my garage. Right. Once you have it, it doesn't cost anything to maintain it. And 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 if it's a, it is a charge point, and if you want to pay for it, you just pay. You just you sign up with Charge Point, and you get your little credit card there, and you just swipe your credit card, and and you're paying for it. How yeah. do you talk? No, I, I, I get it, Victor. I, I mean, the mumbo jumbo in not only that letter, but the previous letter was very confusing and it can't be that complicated, but somehow Washington Electric is charging them a pretty good amount just to have the thing there. Huh. I don't understand why that is. I do uh, not either. For some period of time, it was covered by a grant, so nobody was paying for it, but now they're going to have to. So. I couldn't figure out why would you have to pay to get rid of it. I didn't see the decommissioning was fifteen hundred bucks. I don't get that either. Oh, they come and take the thing out and dig up the wires and dig up the concrete and who did? You know who knows? Not our issue. Who knows? Yeah. It's not our. It's not our business. Thank God. So we don't no. have to worry about it. Wait till we wait till we decommission our our speed signs. But isn't that money coming out of my left pocket? No. Oh, Is that yeah. Part of the school. <laughs> School budget. You I, got it my, in. Highway, my highway funds on the right, but my school. Yeah. On the left. <laughs> Believe me, it's all the taxpayers. Let's let's not get into the school budget. We could we could chew on that school budget for uh, the rest of the evening if we wanted to. I'm sure. But anyway, yeah. I, I the good news is it isn't our issue. They're not asking us to pay for it. It's going to be there if somebody wants to use it. And hopefully that's a good thing, I guess, is what I'm saying. What were the cameras for? Is that because they had vandalism out back at the, in, the, in the woods there where they have uh, classrooms? No, I don't think so. Would they have 2,800 bucks for cameras? That's so they could watch over the people putting their charge card in. Right. I mean, that's all it was for. I mean, if you drive over and look at it, you can't even see the charge station. People park in front of it and there's trees in front of it. And I, it's just a waste of money for the, you know, for the municipality really. But isn't that on our land, the town's land? That's a good question. I think that parking lot, I've always, understood that that parking lot or all but the far, way far end of it is on school land but i don't know exactly where the property line is but the my understanding is the property line is behind the playground and it comes down to the road on a diagonal so it would cover most of the parking lot but whether that's really true or not i don't know Dorinda. i don't know i just i mean it, it tells you something when nobody's used it for three years right yeah exactly Exactly. So it's kind of crazy. But anyway, it's it's not us. And uh, it is too bad about the vandalism. I mean, it's probably kids running around up there. Who knows? Probably. Um, so the next item for discussion is a brief discussion of the Montpelier Volunteer Fire Department status. Uh, no action. I just I just want to again say if we are or think we are potentially marching down the road of taking over the fire department uh we need to think about how and how and when we're going to do that and if we're going to give the fire department time to get their get their uh act in order or are we going to go ahead and do that whether they get their act in order or not i just i don't want to make really We've been missing two of our board members tonight, so this is a bad night to talk about it. But I don't want to, I don't want to uh, lose track of the fact that we need to deal with that issue, because that is always been a burr under my saddle that we have no control over those folks. Now, if by doing that we're going to cause more trouble and more more headache than we avoid, then it doesn't make sense to do it. But uh, I have to believe if we do it correctly and explain to them that, you know. Yes, they're going to be they're going to be under our our oversight and control, but it's not like we're going to be down there managing the operation of the fire department on a day to day basis. At least that certainly is right. That would only be a last resort. But 
I just, I just fundamentally, and every, you've all heard me say this, but I fundamentally don't think it makes sense that we provide all the money and the building and we really have no control at all. I mean, all we can do right. is hold the money. So, more, more to follow on that, but I want you all to be thinking about it, please. Yeah. Um, uh, next item, planning for hybrid town remote meetings going forward, consideration of another town owned Zoom account, action possible. Is that you, Sarah, I presume? Yeah, so um, there are two issues at stake. One is uh, Elias Gardner would like the budget committee to meet on Tuesdays, the same time that the select board meets in preparation of keep getting the budget committee on the schedule for the for when they merge join the select board meetings. And as a result, he asked if it would be possible since we can't run two meetings off one Zoom account, if it would be possible for the town to pay for two Zoom accounts. So there's that issue. The other issue is that with restrictions being lifted, um, it seems to me that the board probably would like to think about moving to in-person meetings and also consider, as Randy pointed out and other people have pointed out, you know, setting up a mechanism to go forward so that there will be Zoom meetings too at, of the, of the in-person meetings. We've discussed this. We, what we have at our disposal right now is I'm donating a flat screen TV that can be a monitor that the board can, we can someone can put it on the wall for me in town hall the board would be able to see who is to speak, who is talking. We have um, a laptop, the Dell laptop, Phil, that no one seems to be using. It has a camera and a microphone. I don't know how good they are, but we it also has a way of, it has an HDMI port. So we could connect the uh, HDMI port from the laptop to the monitor, the flat screen TV. That way we could have Zoom um, you know, on that laptop. The other question is, you know, do you, uh, if you guys are into this, do we get a separate microphone and camera? Those are the little things. But the big issue is, when do you want to start meeting in person again, and what do you think of this hybrid uh, idea? <laughs> I think the hybrid idea is fine. Hey, yeah, I like that idea of that hybrid meeting, meeting in person, and and I <clears throat> I know that we. I mean, technology is there, so we should be able to have a, a big screen or a screen there and be able to have people participate in that in the meeting through Zoom. Uh, exactly when, I, I don't know, but it, I think it would be nice if we could start sometime this summer. Yeah. So I have, a, I, have a, I have a question, and I don't even know if that's possible, but if Orca is going to be there, with their camera, why can't their camera also be hooked up and provide the feed for the Zoom? Because it's not live. Yeah. Theirs is taped. They sometimes don't post it till a week or yeah. two later. Yeah, but they're but they're recording it from that camera. So why couldn't the I don't know. I oh. my concern is so here's my concern. I don't think it's gonna work for us to be sitting around that table the way we have traditionally and try and zoom because no matter where the camera is it isn't going to show all of us we're going to need to figure out how to sit in some kind of horseshoe uh configuration which we probably can do uh so the camera can can see all of us in terms of hearing us we'll just have to experiment and see whether we need a uh need a remote uh microphone or not but the technology I mean, whatever we do, we've got to set it up and try it before, uh, you know, have a have a dry run experiment to make sure that the sound is uh, the sound. Oh. Is working. And I'm not sure. I mean, just just to finish, I'm not sure the sound uh, from a laptop is going to be enough to fill that space. Maybe it is. I, I just don't know until we try it. Yes, Sarah. Uh, Elias says there are these things called owls that you put in the middle of the table and they have a camera and they have a microphone and whoever is speaking, the owl turns to the, I mean, they call them owls. I don't know why. Maybe they look like owls. They cost about 700 bucks though. And they turn toward the speaker at the, at the time and, and that, that 
is connected to the laptop. So there's that possibility. I think the larger question is right now, uh, when do you guys want to meet in person? I mean, you can, we can still zoom through this. I can still zoom through my own laptop right now, you know, make sure that people are somehow part of the meeting, but when, when do you want to get, when do you want to meet in person? If ever. Well, I would say, I mean, I'm just, I'm just throwing a date out and saying, uh, and saying September 1st, let, Okay. let other people, let other people try this and see how it works. Let's not try and reinvent the wheel. This is working. People are going to be traveling and being on vacation. Um, doing the zoom thing through the summer makes sense to me and, and plan on September 1st being ready. Well, to September. Model. That would be, that's just my yeah. thought. I don't know how other people feel. That, I think that's fine, Peter, but the date is actually the, the first Tuesday of the 7th of right. September. Oh, well, that's what I mean. The, yeah. The first yeah. week in September, yes. The, but, um, yeah, Phil. Yeah, I agree with the, the September one. I, you know, that the owl idea is nice, but I think there are probably some other ways for us to do this with a, an external camera that has somewhat of a wide focus and at least one, maybe two external microphones that just pick up, you know, whoever is speaking. It seems to me that we should be able to do that a lot cheaper than seven hundred dollars. Um, and I'd be glad to do a little research on that. Sarah, what what computer is that is is there that nobody's using? The Dell laptop. I think it was for. I think it was uh, Paul's that he had, or. I don't know. It was. It's been sitting in the road. It's been sitting in the highway department box for about a year. Shane doesn't have that. No. Nope. What's Shane using for a computer? I don't know. Maybe he has a. Does he have a computer up at the highway department? Yes. Well, if he we doesn't need one in his truck. Didn't we buy a new computer for him? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. We did. I so I think the Dell is. I, I think the Dell is the old one. Oh, is that? That's the Chromebook. No, no, no. Yeah, it's, that, it's, it's, a camera. it's actually yeah. Dell and it has ports in it and everything. Yeah. Really? It's a little, it's it's more of a little, um, you know, little notebook as opposed to a Chromebook. It's, you know, it's a mini laptop. Huh. I have no idea. Well, but, all, all I'm saying, guys, is if we're going to do this and... We're potentially going to do this for town meeting as well. Making a reasonable investment to have the correct equipment with the correct software yeah. and have it work well, I think is important. And, you know, I don't want to spend thousands of dollars, but if we need to spend a thousand dollars or maybe a little more out of our uh, contingency fund mm -hmm. to make sure we have the right software, I just, I just don't want to have it be a disaster because we try and save too much money. Right. The um, I think that this has I I'm excited about this because I think yeah. it has real potential to have more people participate in all kinds of meetings, not just select board. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um. The the computer that we have there, the public computer. Yeah. Is actually very powerful. I mean, I know it's small. But that's a very powerful computer, and we may be able to just to reconfigure how we set up down there and just use that also with okay. external camera and mic um, as a possibility. Um, let's just go back to the Zoom account for a minute. So, what's the cost? What are we paying for um, a Zoom account? Uh, we pay, I think. $45 a month, but we get, um, we get, uh, you know, uh, unlimited cloud recording. Right. Do, can't we just upgrade that so that we I think so. I think so. I think we could just add like a, like another account so that he can do, he can do that. Yes. Yeah, so yeah. My research, I think it was something like $15 extra. For the extra. Yeah. For an extra login. Yeah. yeah that would, I mean, I that no would be problem. the way to go. I have no problem with $15. I mean, yeah. I was I was getting ready to say, you know, with the, with the whole month, they absolutely have to have their meetings in the same two hour time frame that we have our meetings. But for fifteen bucks, yeah, we've got other battles to fight, and uh, 
you know, it may prove useful to have two accounts because there may be conflicts, other conflicts from time to time, so. I believe you can do breakout rooms. So they could call in and they could do a breakout room and the select board could do a breakout room, have a room. That could be, and yeah. That's done all the time. So yeah. I, I think there's other ways of doing it. The other thing is I thought we talked about um, at one point moving the select board meetings upstairs. That way you would have more room to Oh. Set up your horseshoe, you'd have room to hang the large screen upstairs. So rather than trying to configure that, right. you know, small area downstairs yeah. with that computer, you would set something up upstairs. I think that makes makes sense. I was thinking about that too. And also, if we have, you know, it isn't just the the five or six people who show up at meetings. If all of a sudden we have more people showing up at the meeting. Being in that bigger space upstairs would make sense. So yeah. we can, we don't, September 1st is a long way off. We can think about this, but I think potentially doing it upstairs makes sense. Well, it's, yeah, and yeah. it's not just, it's not just us. It's also the planning commission. The, they're, they're, they're going to have hearings. The zoning commission, the, zone, the ZBA is eager to get meet back in person. So, um, you know, they, they also need the more more space up there and right we'd move the move the famous walter kelly table upstairs yeah no we need that for research downstairs yeah. <laughs> we need new chairs that's for sure for there yeah, yeah. yeah you need new chairs upstairs those are you can't... My that's when we'll come back to meeting in person very well in those steel chair anyway yeah. we can figure that out yeah and not that this has anything to do with in-persons, but, and I'm not trying to throw you under the bus, Phil, or anything, but what's happening with these emails? We're paying for this every single month. Everybody's and, online except for the listers. Okay, well, let's just put them online, put, take down their email. I, They'll go online they, pretty damn quick. I know they will, but I, you know, I was told, no, they're not doing it yet. Well, probably well, they, not now. Don't. <laughs> Not while they're uh, not while they're dealing with grievances. Right. They said they would do it by mid June. So I think you know we should hold their feet to the fire. Everybody else is on. Everybody else is on. Everybody okay. else is on and using it. Okay. So you know, I, I just it's a shame. I pay that bill every month and it's uh, it's a, it's too bad. Yeah, um, I know. Tom, I mean, I totally agree, but it's a battle I've been fighting for months. Okay. You know, and I'm told we don't have any authority, so. Nope. Well, you do over your computers. <laughs> I hate to say no, that. No, but that would be kind of cutting off our nose to spread our face, wouldn't it? Hey, it'll be mid-June before we know it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 It's, been, it's. I mean, um, if I had any idea that this process was going to go this way, I, I would never have done this. <laughs> yeah. Well, we're almost there. Yep. So Peter, oh, Peter, yes, Vic. Um, I was going to ask Phil. I have a, my accounts all set up. Yeah. But but nobody uses uh, uh, you know, and I've tested with Dorinda and stuff. Yeah. Nobody, no. nobody, it still comes through on my own personal re email. What am right, I? Right, because nobody's using it. So I'll you use it, Nick. Okay. Well, I'm going to have Dave update the website to say that, you know there's new and again this is one of those things where do i hold off until june so the listers get on board or do we do it now and i'd wait they, you're they, almost to june now let's wait and get past this that's kind of what i thought stuff and yeah. Oh, okay yeah agree okay but you can certainly tell people people you know when you respond to them vic that says please use my uh, Middlesex Vermont account. Okay. Yeah. Yep. I mean, once once we all and I'm and I'm bad too because I I revert to my old habits without thinking about it. Oh. You know what we've all got to do is is force ourselves to start using it. Once we Jeez. start using it, then people will reply yep. to it. Right. It'll right. work. Um, is there any other business before we go into uh, executive session? Can I go back to the treasurer's report for a minute? Yes. Um, Welch Park. 
they owe us $4,500, which goes back to over a year. <laughs> and um, you, something's got to be done about this. Who is it? Is it consolidated that owes us the money or is it? Well, we were originally mailing the bills to consolidated. We've now sent them to um, to uh, Matt Oates. And the last one went to him um, May 24th or something like that. And, you know, would and you we sent him all the past due ones as well. Okay, would you would you copy that? email to me with his contact information and I'm just going to badger him to death. That's that's absolutely ridiculous. Yeah. Okay. I agree. What do they owe us for? They owe us for sure. all the insurances and it goes back to water testing because a year ago we were still on the water thing. Um, I think there's might even be some bills there to Shanette. Um, okay. I, I don't have them in front of me, but yeah. I know I was just looking at the last email that went out to Matt and it was it the invoices were like forty five hundred dollars. Yeah, no, it's crazy. I agree, Dorinda. Thank you. So get that to me and I will report back to you after I talk to him. Yes, Victor. Um, back to the the uh, just an FYI for um Dorinda. Um we're gonna get that mowing machine to mow the sides of the road first week in uh, July. We tried to get it the last week in uh, June, but they they we did, and then they changed it on us. So we'll be running that, and if uh, we'll try to swap it around, but somebody might get a little overtime. Uh, we've got it for a week, so kind of got to yeah. run. Yeah, it's actually yeah. only four days. They pick it up at ten o'clock on. Friday morning or something. So you really only have it four days. Yeah. Victor, it's not going to be that much overtime anyway, no matter what. So. No, no, I know, I know, uh, Steve, it isn't, uh, but we were, uh, Shane and I were talking about it and, um, you know, and, and uh, he, he, he asked me about it and I, I just said, well, if we got to have a little bit, we got to have a little bit. Uh, I know yeah. last week he worked some overtime, uh, and uh, he just uh, took off early to make up for it and keep his 40 hours, which is, is, is uh, well, if it's a fixed cost for the machine. So the thing never gets cold that whole week. It's fine with me. <laughs> OK, run that, run it, get the get the job. Yeah. That's what's important. Yeah, exactly. All right. OK, anything else, anyone, before we go into executive session? Okay, then. Now, how do we do this with two executive sessions? Do we come in and come out and come in and come out, or do we just go in and stay in, Sarah? Uh, well, you could make a motion to an executive session for both reasons. That's probably the most practical. There you go. Yeah. So would someone make that motion, please, Steve or Bill? Uh, I'll make that motion. That we go into executive session for, for both sessions. And that, uh, now do you want Dorinda and Sarah to be present? Yes. Yes, I would say so, yes. Okay. Second. That's the motion. Bill seconds it. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, okay. let me just get rid of people. Okay. Yeah. Bye, everybody. Randy, Victor. Bye, guys. The recording has stopped. Oh.